Spirit and living God, we give you all glory and praise. Father, we thank you for this Sunday morning that your children are gathered in your house. Father, help me speak a word to the hearts of your people and let us leave blessed and filled with your spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated in the house of God. Hallelujah. God bless you, daughters. Please be seated. Bless you, mom, coach, and on the drums as well. May God bless you this morning. Hope everybody's uh, feeling good. Yeah. Hallelujah. This is Resurrection Central. We meet here at 10 o'clock on Sundays, um, and you're all welcome to come. If you don't have a Bible-believing church and you want to fellowship with us, every Thursday we're learning some great things in the Bible study, and um, it's kind of in tune with what we're going to learn today around Bible study and prayers. And at 7 o'clock Thursday in the building or by Zoom, if you don't have the Zoom link, please speak to the welcome team. They'll give it to you straight after service. And also Saturday, we have our Open Heavens prayer, 7 a.m., all on Zoom. We have such a great time. We hear testimonies. We take prayer requests, but it sets up the weekend and the week so nicely. And that's just an element. You know, you have to pray a minimum of one hour a day, every day of the week is a minimum. Now, we've lost the art of prayer and we've lost the art of Bible study. And that means we've lost the, the ability to be fruitful on this earth. So let's join all the programs. Hallelujah. And um, we're learning great things and we're all growing. Sh uh, straight after service, please, um, in the main auditorium. Uh, we'll be back in there soon once they fix the roof. But every worker and leader, don't run home. Hallelujah. Come and we have a quick meeting and we're going to just set out things for the year and, and let you know our vision and let you know our plans and how we can also support you. Hallelujah. The sermon today is simply called, You Shall Bear Fruit. Hallelujah. You shall bear fruit. Find three people that, that look happy and tell them you shall bear fruit. Hallelujah. You shall bear fruit. It's not, it's, it's not optional. Hallelujah. And we're going to learn that every believer who is on this earth is required to bear fruit. Hallelujah. Is everyone still with me? You're required. It's, it's not a nice to have. It's actually a requirement. And let us please take our Bibles to Matthew chapter 21. Matthew chapter 21, and we'll read from verse 18, please. Yeah, sometimes the uh, phone Bible confuses you. Um, does that just happen to me, or does it, it happen? Matthew chapter 21, verse 18 to 22, hallelujah. And it's a scripture that we all know or many of us should know. And if, you're not, if you don't know, then you should know. Hallelujah. Matthew 21, verse 18 to 22. Now in the morning, as he returned to the city, he was hungry. Hallelujah. And this is the second time in the scriptures that you see that Jesus was hungry. And sometimes you think that God of very God, he felt like us and was hungry. There was another time in John chapter 4, he was hungry and the disciples went to buy food. And when they brought the food back, Jesus said, my food is to do the will of him that sent me. In other words, the most natural thing for Jesus to do was to do the will of God. Hallelujah. And we ask ourselves today, in our natural state, is the most natural thing for us to do is what God wants us to do. Is that come natural? Is that a default position? Is everyone still with me for a sec? And, you know, do we walk on this earth thinking, I just want to do the will of God in my life. I just want to do what God wants to do. And that was the state that Jesus lived in on this earth. Hallelujah. And it says, and seeing a fig tree by the road, he came to it and found nothing on it but leaves. And it's interesting, if we understand the fig tree, the figs come before the leaves. This is very important. Just keep that in your spirit for a second. And said to it, let no fruit grow on you ever again. Immediately, the fig tree withered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, how did the fig tree wither away so soon? So Jesus answered and said to them, assuredly, 
I say to you, if you have faith and do not doubt, you will not only do what was done to the fig tree, but also if you say to this mountain, be removed and cast into the sea, it will be done. And whoever asks things and, and whatever you ask in prayer, believe and you will receive. So Jesus gives two separate teachings, one about the fig tree and one about prayer. Is everyone still with me? So he gives two principles on prayer. Keep that in your spirit for a second. Let's please go to John. John chapter 15. And we'll read just one verse, 16. And Jesus is speaking to the disciples. And Jesus says, you did not choose me, but I chose you. And I appointed you that you should go and bear fruit and that your fruit should remain. And whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will give you. He's still with me. So when two episodes about fruit, Jesus is talking about prayer. But Jesus says, I didn't choose you. I, you didn't choose me, I chose you. And he says, I've appointed you that you should bear fruit. So you're appointed to bear fruit. Now, every believer on this earth is called and commanded to bear fruit. Sometimes you look at the commandments and you look at things and you think, as long as I'm not doing something, I'm all right. So as long as I'm not doing a particular sin or I'm not running in the club and, and running around with those that do, as long as I'm not doing something wrong, obviously I'm, I'm okay. But many of what we do wrong in the eyes of God is what we don't do. Is everyone still with me for a sec? There's things that you should do and you're not doing them and it's wrong. So you think, I'm just going to avoid sin, I'm just going to cut, not cast, I'm not going to smoke, I'm not going to drink, I'm not going to do any of that, and I'm okay. But no, it's far deeper than that for the believer. There's things that if you're not doing them, they are, they are worse, and we're going to come to that. Because there's things that you're called and mandated to do by God on this earth. You're not born by accident. You're not, you're not just thrown out into this world. God designed you with a plan and a purpose, and God brought you into this earth for you to do something very specific. Every single person. God is not a parent like that that doesn't plan the life out for his children. You know, some, of, some of us parents, we, we plan the life of our children, where they're going to go to school, where they're going to go here, what, and we do all of those things. God is the master planner, and he has a plan for your life. So you were born with a purpose. Look at someone and say, I have a purpose. And, the, and, and you're commanded to bear fruit. It's not a nice to have. Some people think, I can just stay out of trouble. But if you're not bearing fruit as a believer, there is a massive issue. And, and, and you, but you, it's not, there, you, you will fail in life. Every single one of us, there'll be points of failure. And we're going to come to that. It's not the failure that is the issue. It's the non-bearing of fruit that is the issue. Everyone fails in some point. And you just got to dust yourself up and move on. But if you're not bearing fruit, that's more dangerous than failure. Are you, still, are you still with me? You see, when God pronounces a blessing, when you read the word of God very well, God pronounces his blessings in this way. And it is so consistent. It's a, it's a theme throughout the word of God. When God blessed Noah, Noah, he's told him to be what? Fruitful. When God blessed Abraham, he said, you will be what? Even when you talk about Ishmael, God said, I will make him, what? Well, fruitful. When Isaac was blessed, there was a, he called the place Rehoboth, meaning that God has made room for us. And it's, and it's an interesting principle. Some people think that when other people are being blessed, it's an impact on me. But no, it doesn't work like that. Whatever somebody else is doing and having and getting and, and being blessed, it's no reflection on you. Because God has made room for everybody to be blessed. Some people are jealous of other people. Some people covert and look at what other people have. But I submit to you this morning, you don't know what someone walked through to get what they've got. You don't know what someone done in the closet to receive what they received. You don't know the pain of somebody, the sacrifice that they made when you're looking at somebody else's blessing. But God has made room for everybody on this earth to be blessed. So don't worry about what somebody else has. Look, understand that God will make you fruitful. Isaac said God has made room for us to be fruitful in this place. Is everyone still with me for a second? When Jacob was dying, the Bible says that he prophesied to Joseph and said, the Lord has made him like a fruitful well when he was prophesying. Jacob said, God Almighty appeared to me and made me fruitful. 
Even Leviticus, when you talk about the favour of God, it says, I've looked upon you favourably, so I'll make you fruitful. Colossians said we should be fruitful in every good work. The blessings of God are directly connected to fruitfulness. That You can't separate them. You, can't, you cannot separate the blessings of God and fruitfulness. They come together. Is everyone still with me? That's interesting. We spoke on the fig tree, and the fig tree looked like it was fruitful. Why? Because if you understand botany and nature, the fig tree can only produce, once it's produced leaves, it means it's already produced figs. Is everyone still with me for a sec? So when Jesus looked at the fig tree, it had the appearance that it bore fruit, but it didn't. And this is something that is killing people today. Appearances. What do I mean? We're just so much interested in the outward appearance, how things look. We're more interested in the outward appearance rather than the reality of what we're living. As long as we look good on the outside, we're all right. As long as no one really knows what's going on. We all grew up in houses where we were told, don't ever speak about what's going on in this house. You know, don't, don't ever do that. You know, we, we, we had to keep secret what was going on in the house. We couldn't let be known the things that were going wrong. We always had to appear that things were looking good. Is everyone still with me? No matter how bad things looked behind closed doors, as long as the outward appearance looked okay, that's what people are more interested in. People will say, you know, what will people say? What will people say about me if they know this issue? How does it look? So people are more worried about what people will say about you, how you look, rather than being worried about how you're really living and what is really going on. It's about appearance. Is everyone still with me? And it's interesting. We live in an age where people are fixated on appearances rather than bearing fruit and results. They're fixated on it. How does it look? And, and it's interesting is the people of God, I was discussing it, in fact, with Pastor Chris this morning, they stood up one day and said, come make us a king so we can be like what? Other people. And that's what kills people. You always want to be like other people. You always want to have what other people have. You, always, you know, why do you want to be like other people when God has put you into this earth with a very unique blessing that he wants to have for you? They said, we just want to be like other people. And sometimes you want to be like somebody else, you don't know what they're going through. It, it may look good on the outside, but sometimes people are suffering, but we, we now learn how to hide our suffering and mask what is going on. We've now, we've now learned how to look blessed when we're not really blessed. Are you still with me? And, and that's what we're into. And it's interesting, you've been called, every single one of you has been called into greatness in your Christian walk. And Christianity is not about saying you're a Christian and turning up, it's about producing fruit. And fruit means that you're productive and you're getting results. God has commanded us to be fruitful. So sometimes analyze your life. Are you being fruitful? Are you bearing fruit? Are you producing results? Are you being productive? Hallelujah. So Jesus saw this fig tree. And Jesus went up to the fig tree, decided to pick fruit from it. And what was the interesting thing? The tree should have had fruit on it. It should have had fruit. The tree should have been bearing fruit, and it's the same as every believer. You should be bearing fruit. It's, it's not optional. You should be bearing fruit. Every single one of us in the auditorium, you should be bearing fruit. Now, Jesus, when he saw that the fig tree was not operating in its purpose, because many of us, we're operating, all right, but we're not operating in our purpose. And when you're not operating in your purpose, it's impossible to be fruitful. You, the fruit of life comes from the operation of you in the purpose that God has designed you to be in and called you to be in. If you're in the right position, you'll be fruitful. Sometimes you're in the wrong position and it will impact your fruit bearing. And the tree should have had fruit on it. And Jesus went up to the, went up to the tree because he was hungry. And it had leaves, which meant it had the appearance of being blessed. I don't know about you, but I don't want the appearance of being blessed. I actually want to be blessed. Is everyone still people? Don't worry about the appearance of being blessed because the tree had the appearance of being blessed and being fruitful. But it wasn't the case. And Jesus looked at the tree and it wasn't fulfilling its purpose. 
So I want to ask a question. On this earth, are you fulfilling your purpose? Because it's not the failure points. It's are you fruitful in your purpose? And what happened? The fig tree was designed to bring forth figs. And it wasn't doing that. So Jesus cursed the fig tree from the roots. When you read it also in the book of Mark. And people think that he cursed the tree, but he cursed the roots because once the roots are destroyed, nothing can grow again. And so this is why we always make sure we're rooted in the right place, rooted in the word of God, rooted in prayer, because if the roots are not right, you cannot grow properly. And the Bible says in Mark that Jesus cursed the roots. And the Greek word was parakmia, which means immediately. And why was the fruit fig tree cursed? Because it was not operating as it should be operating. It wasn't bearing fruit as it should be bearing fruit. And the fig tree, when you read the Bible, it is such an important tree. Is everyone still with me for a sec? When you read the book of Deuteronomy, it said that the promised land was full of fig trees. Number one, when the spies returned from the land, the way they was able to say that the land was was good was because they brought forth some figs from the fig tree. When you read Jeremiah and Hosea, the fig tree is directly equated to what? Prosperity and peace. It was, a, it was a big tree. It used to provide shade. In fact, when you read the word of God, Nathaniel, when Jesus noticed him, he was sat under what? The fig tree. And it's even, it's even deeper than that. When God spoke about destruction and anger, he said, I'm going to destroy it in the Psalm 105, the fig tree. And there's something about the fig tree that is unique that more than any other tree. It bears fruit twice in one year. It bears fruit twice in one year. So every other tree has one season of fruit, but a fig tree has two in one year. And as the believer, you will, you will bear fruit and excel far beyond, far beyond normal things. So the fig tree had two seasons of bearing fruit. Don't, don't think that, yes, you're just like the world, you're just like everything else. No, God will design you in a way that you can bear fruit in seasons when other people cannot. You see, you see, so you think that your fruit bearing is seasonal. You think that you need this, you need that. But no, God will allow you to bring, bring, bring forth fruit in extraordinary ways just because you are a child of God and you are different. It brings forth crops in two seasons. Now, the fig tree wasn't useful. So what kills people on this earth, whether you feel it or understand it or not, is when you're not useful in a capacity Life becomes very challenging. Life becomes very taxing. If, 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 you're, if you're not producing fruit, you, you feel it, you know it. If you're not being productive on, on this earth, you know some of us, we've got jobs and we're not doing well in the job or we're bored in the job. And you know, we sit down on the job all day and you know, 5.30 we finish. So by five past five, your computer, you're already ready. You're already logging in. You're already getting around because you want to get out of there. You want to get out of there. Come 5.30, laptop shut, out the door. You're ready. You, 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 you ever, have you ever been there? Where you, you're not really productive in that job. You're just turning up for the cash. Right. But you're not, you're, not, you're, not, you're not producing anything. You're not adding value. But you're just there for the money. Has anyone ever been there? Maybe no one here, but those outside. You don't enjoy the job. You know you're not being productive. Some people you feel like you're even stealing because you're not working, hallelujah. Have you ever been there? You think, I'm getting this money and I've not done anything even for it. Hallelujah. I just surfed the internet all day. You, have you ever done that before? You, you, you break up your day from 9 to 11, you read the news. Then you go to the coffee shop. You come back. You then read about the sports. Then lunch. Then you go to lunch. You then you sit down, you talk to your friends. Before you know it, it's 5.30. And that was your day. And you're not being, but, but you sometimes you feel like you, you know, everybody knows when you're not being productive. It's inside of us because we're designed to be fruitful. So you know when you're not being productive. And, and the, the issue was this. Jesus was not interested in the failure. He was interested in this, that the, the, the fig tree was not useful. So un analyze this day. Are we being useful? Because we have to understand Jesus proclaimed the curse on something because it was not useful. Hallelujah. And that's the principle in life. If you're not useful, what use are you? 
I'm not saying that anybody here is useless. I understand this in a very good way. But if you're not useful in an area, where is the use? Have you ever been there? there there's nothing more taxing when you, you give someone a job and they're not doing the job well. It, it, it's, it's, bad. it's bad on them and it's bad on you. You know when you give someone a job that's wrong for them and wrong for you, it's bad all around because they're not producing fruit. Now, ask yourself a question. In your existence, are you fulfilling what God has called you to do? Because if you're not, that's the place of what? Elimination. And, and, and one day, Christ, when Christ looks at us, what does he see? Does he see usefulness? Does he see us fulfilling that God-given calling? The God has designed you to do this. Are you doing what God has designed you to do? The fig tree had one use and it wasn't fulfilling it. And what happens? Jesus proclaimed the curse on it. Jesus judged the tree. So everybody has a function. Everybody has a function under God. But if you're not being useful in that function, disaster can come. So disaster wasn't because they tried something and didn't do well. Disaster came because they were not fruitful in what they were designed to be. Is everyone still with me? Now it's interesting. The tree looked like it should have had figs on it. So Jesus saw the tree from a distance and there were leaves on the tree. So it looks like there should have been figs. Why? Because as I said, figs come before leaves. Go and look into it. So Jesus, it looked like it should have been producing something. It looks like it should have had figs. And, and this look like is interesting because sometimes we look like we've got faith. We look like we know how to pray. We look like these things, but we're not producing them. Sometimes you've got, you, you know, and we've learned a type of religiosity. What does that mean? You just go up to somebody, how are you doing? Oh, I'm blessed, filled with the Holy Ghost, I'm sanctified. Yeah. And the person is messed up. Hallelujah. We've understood the language, but we've not understand, understood the tangible results. So the fig tree looked okay. So sometimes you'll speak to someone, oh, I'm going through this, they go, yeah, God's going to do it. And then, and then you tap into what they're saying and you feel the emptiness of their words because they've just learned to say the right thing without practicing the, right, the real thing, without practicing faith. You've learned what to say, but we're not feeling it. Hallelujah. And what is interesting, we think, yeah, it's okay. Don't worry about it. I'm not fulfilling my purpose. I'm not being useful what in the capacity that God has called me into. Oh, that's all right. But what happened? Jesus came to inspect the fig tree. And understand this very morning. Jesus will inspect us. We, we, we think Christianity is a, a, a point of no introspection. We think God is not looking over this earth to see who is faithful, to see who is doing what they've been called to do. Jesus went up to the fig tree to inspect it. And when he got there, oh, wait a minute, there's no fruit on there. He didn't curse the fruit tree from a distance. He cursed it close up on inspection. And sometimes the Lord will come up and inspect you and say, where is the fruit? Are you doing what you're called to do? Every one of us will be inspected by the Lord. And it's better to get it right now rather than at the point of death. Hallelujah. So, so when Jesus comes to inspect you, what will he find and what will he see? It's a question. And, and it's interesting. Jesus was looking for fruit, but he didn't find it. And Jesus stood up. And it's one of the few times you'll see him pronouncing a curse on something. Why? Because the thing was not useful. Every believer we're called to be useful, we have to be useful. You see, Adam done something interesting. The Bible says Adam went to the fig tree and took the leaves to cover himself. But Jesus came to the fig tree looking for fruit and didn't find it. And Jesus searches us for real faith, good character, the fruits of the Spirit, fervent prayer. And I believe that prayer is a lost art amongst many believers. Are we walking with God? Hallelujah. So he expects to see fruit. And our Lord in heaven is expecting great things from us. Never ever underestimate what God has called you as an individual to do on this earth. Sometimes we, we, we talk ourselves out of things because we think with our own minds rather than thinking what God can use us and has called us to do. If we understood what God has, can, has called us to do and what God can use us to do, we'll have a very different mentality. Hallelujah. And you may say, what can I do to be, to be fruitful? Hallelujah. 
what can I do to be fruitful? Sometimes people will just say, you know, just, just, just give this money to receive the blessing. And, and that's not always the case. Hallelujah. There are certain things that if you avoid these things, you cannot be fruitful as what? A believer. I'm just talking to believers. Hallelujah. So if you, to be fruitful as a believer, there's certain things you have to deploy. You cannot take a shortcut. If you don't have these certain things in your Christian life, you cannot be fruitful. And what is the danger we've seen? Do you want Jesus to turn up on inspection and say, wait a minute, this person is not fruitful. So point number one, we have to be a people that study the scripture and get revelation. You know, you can read the Bible and sometimes it's all Greek to you. Sometimes you, you might be reading it and you don't even get anything from it. You have to not just read the Bible, you have to go in and study it. And it, the Bible is the sweetest thing on the face of this planet. It has the solution and answer to every single thing you're going through. It has the solution and it has the solution to any challenge that you may come that may come to you. It can give you a word to lift you out of any situation. If you're feeling down, there's a word for you. If you're sick, there's a word for you. If you're lonely, there's a word for you. If you don't feel love, there's a word for you. There's a word in the scripture for everything known to man and woman on this earth. But some of us, we're reading without revelation because we're not studying the word of God. And, and there's a fruit that comes from the word of God. Have you ever been there, you're going through something and you just catch a word and it brings, it brings relaxation, it brings release, it brings deliverance to you. The, 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 the Pharisees, they, they, they understood this. The Pharisees knew the word of God better than any of us from the point of memory. Because you had to recite Genesis to Deuteronomy to be a Pharisee, off by heart. If we even asked you to recite the first three verses of Genesis, some of you would run away, hallelujah. And you had to re recite Genesis to Deuteronomy off by heart to qualify to be a Pharisee. If we tell you to even speak of Leviticus, some of you say, what's it? Is that even a book even in the Bible? You know that book is a tough book, hallelujah. There's some books, you just skim over them quickly, especially the Chronicles and the Numbers. No, 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 let's just skip over all of that. Hallelujah. But we have to be fruitful on this earth. You have to be a student of the word. The Pharisee says to, the, Jesus said to the Pharisees one day, he said, have you not read what David and his companions done in Abiathar, in the days of Abiathar, the high priest? Jesus asked them a question. He said, have you not read that? The irony of the question was they had read it and they knew it. But Jesus said to them, have you not read this? So in other words, we have to, to get fruit from the word. It's not just the reading, it's the revelation. The Pharisees read, but they read without revelation. So to be fruitful, we must read and catch the revelation. And in the way you do that, you go into the word, you study, it, you meditate on it, you devour it. The reading of the word is a lost start. And without that, there'll be great issues around you bearing fruit on this earth. It would develop your Christian life. We have to have a consistent, deep Bible study, a, a relationship with the word of God. Hallelujah. We need to, you, you can speak to people and, and sometimes it's strange, you throw out obscure scriptures and you know that nobody knows them. Nobody's heard it. You, people don't even know that some things are in the Bible. You must devour the word of God to get fruit. You have to have a zeal about it. Hallelujah. Number one, for fruitfulness, you must be a, an avid student of the word. Every day you must read your word. Every day you must go into it. Hallelujah. John Wesley said an hour scripture reading and an hour prayer the minimum in one day hallelujah consistency you know monday we're in the scripture tuesday we're reading magazine wednesday we're watching tv be consistent in your bible reading and you'll be fruitful then we must move on to prayer it's it's like going into the gym and expecting muscles without lifting weights you have to be a prayerful person to be fruitful no prayer, no fruit. You, you can't be a fruitful believer if you're not prayerful. If you're not prayerful, you cannot be fruitful. So, so put that in your spirit today and, be, and, and understand that you have to be a prayerful believer to be fruitful. The neglect of prayer, if you could see that it impacts everything in your life. The company that you keep and the people you fellowship with, 
That directly will be the correlation of how you're fruitful on this earth. Who influences you and who has impacts on your life? That will, that will be the deciding factor on are you fruitful? Hallelujah. How you think impacts your ability to be fruitful. There's some people they are always negative. Always thinking bad, always downcast, always thinking that, you know, one person sees an issue, they think, oh, here's an opportunity. Another person sees the issue, they think, oh, the world is over. Sometimes people, the way you think impacts your ability to be fruitful. Always thinking negatively, always, always thinking, oh, what's going to go wrong? Yeah, you even speak to people, oh, I've got a pain in my arm. Oh, is it cancer? You know, yeah, you know, my foot's hurting. Oh, you know, I know someone that got amputated. No, I've got a headache. Oh, what's going on? You know, everything is negative. There's people, you just go and speak to them and you know it's going to be negative. Sometimes when they call you, like, oh my God, what are they going to go on about now? <laughs> Hallelujah, are you still with me? Always thinking negatively. Ne 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 never got an open mind, not have a godly mind. Not thinking about the goodness of God. Not thinking about the good things God has done. Always thinking about what is going wrong. And you know how many times have you thought about what is going wrong and it's not gone wrong? But you think, no, this is going to go wrong, and it doesn't go wrong. But you spend all your time thinking that it's going to go wrong. And that impacts you, how you think, and how, how, you, how you're going to exist on this earth. Hallelujah. <coughs> Obedience to the word of God is the greatest impact, disobedience, on fruitfulness. Disobedience to the word of God, it will impact you. Hallelujah. And it will bring you setbacks. When David killed Uriah, he faced setbacks. People read on, four of David's children died before him. Hallelujah. When he killed Uriah. And it's actually a very, very interesting story. When you read that, when you read that issue, Dave, God said to David, it's not an issue of women because if it's women you wanted, I want to give you more. But you've, the way you've treated somebody under your authority, this is the issue I have with you. Hallelujah. And it was actually very funny when David got Uriah killed. He put him in the worst part of the battle. And when he died... I always think what David said, he goes, oh, that's war. Some die, some live. Don't worry about it. That's how, he, that's how he spoke about the situation. He said, don't worry, go back and overthrow the city. Then he took the man's wife and he faced setbacks. Samson faced major setbacks. Hallelujah. And interesting, I want to touch upon something. Failure is not fatal. Just, just write it down. Failure is not fatal. Failure at all is not fatal. Because you can still fail and come back and be fruitful. Some people fail and they beat themselves up. Some people don't go forward in the way you anticipate you should go forward and it impacts your whole life. Some people are not seeing life as they, they wanted or envisaged that they would see it and this impacts them but put your hand on your chest and say failure is not fatal. Yeah, some of you may be thinking it can be and yes, in certain circumstances it can be but in general, failure is not fatal. David failed, Elijah failed, Paul had an awful history, Peter failed in one point, but they were still went on to be what? Fruitful. So don't beat yourself up if you failed in an area. Don't beat yourself up if you've not achieved what you wanted to achieve at this stage of your life. You've still got opportunities to be what? Fruitful. Forgiveness. Lack of forgiveness is one of the biggest hindrances against you being fruitful. It's the biggest interest, and I experienced it. There was a, a person, man, I, I, was, I really had it in my mind against this guy. And I thought I forgave the guy. But every time I would see the guy, I'd become angry. Every, I would see the guy, I'd just become furious. Just like, just his presence would annoy me. I, and, and, and if I saw a person walking already, I was angry inside. But I thought I forgave the person. Even when the person came to greet me, I was angry. I, I, I couldn't shake it. It took me ages. The person would speak, I was angry. I would see the person call my phone, I was angry. I would see even people that related to me, I was angry. But I thought I forgave, but I didn't. And it was impacted me in so many areas. Hallelujah. The person would say something nice to me, I was angry. The person would say something horrible, I was angry. Everything the person would do, I was angry. And I thought, no, 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 I've forgiven the person. But no, I didn't. I didn't forgive. And it took me years to get into a place where I didn't feel that way anymore. Well, now when I saw the person, I even felt sorry for them. When I saw the person, I didn't care anymore. 
But it was a time it was burned so in me that the person would invoke anger in me every single time. And this lack of when you think you've forgiven and you haven't. Hallelujah. It's a problem. Sometimes you think you've forgiven and you haven't. And it's still there. In 1991, one of my best friends, Jane, her name was, we were tight. We were really good friends. She worked in KFC, I worked in Woolworths. I would get free KFC, she would get free pick and mix. We had, it, we, had it all, we had it all working. It was brilliant. And then one day, Jane came to me and said, Aaron, can I borrow 10 pounds? Guys, I was on two pound 12p an hour. That's five hours work almost. <laughs> Hallelujah. I said, no problem. There's the tenor. Little did I know she was moving to Scotland and it was all planned. Wow. 1991, I'm still bothered. Hallelujah. I'm still, I'm, still, I'm still bothered. That was my good friend. I'm still bothered. Pray for, so I'm still bothered. I need, to, I need to find the forgiver. Hallelujah. Come on, if you have to give up five hours work just for a person that runs away, you're not going to be very happy. But that's the point is, is that without forgiveness, it impacts your fruitfulness. You have to forgive people no matter what they do, no matter what they've done to you, no matter how they've offended you. And sometimes you think you've forgiven, but you're still harboring the resentment. You think you're forgiven, but you're still offended by what they've done. And it impacts how you can be fruitful. Forgiveness is the key. And it's interesting. Forg lack of forgiveness will bring bitterness. And in, and in bitter waters and bitter environments, things can't grow. Hallelujah. Now, our Lord concluded the pass passage on fruitfulness by teaching on the dynamics of prayer. Hallelujah. Because being dynamic in prayer automatically will make you fruitful. You see, people think fruitfulness is material manifestations all the time. But if you're prayerful, you're fruitful. If you're prayerful, you're in the spiritual realm, you're fruitful. Everyone's thinking about the, being fruitful in receiving on this earth. But you could have nothing on this earth and be a prayer warrior and be fruitful in the realm of the spirit. And, and in your prayers that you do in your closet, things will manifest for even other people on this earth. So your prayers can make other people fruitful. Are you still with me for a sec? Now, one of the greatest preachers of all time, the Honorable Reverend Charles Spurgeon, who had the biggest church, 6,000 people, or 200 years ago. They once somebody, some dignitaries came and said, why are you so fruitful in this ministry? He says, you see that man who's uh, illiterate, he never went to school, he, he's, he's not very good in English. He, he, 20 hours a day, he lies on the altar and prays for this ministry. He said, that, that's the reason for the success of this ministry. You can, be, you can make other things fruitful if you're prayerful. Hallelujah. And Jesus said two things about prayer that we read. He said prayer can what? Remove mountains. And he said, if we ask and we believe. So two things, prayer can remove mountains. And if we ask and we believe, we will what? Receive. So Jesus is telling us that prayer gives us the ability to do the impossible. And prayer gives you the power for God to come into your life to do what you cannot do. Hallelujah. And, and you think it's not physically telling the mountain to jump from its place and move. That's not happened and that's not what Jesus done. But prayer gives you the ability to be fruitful. Why? Because it gives you the, the power to overcome insurmountable obstacles. Have you ever been there where something's in front of you? And you just go on your knee, you fast the day and it moves. You see, and prayer also gives you this. For you to be fruitful, you need to be a person that can survive and thrive in tough environments. And some of us, we crack in certain environments because of a lack of prayer. If we were prayerful about a situation, we'd be able to stand in it. But sometimes we can't take a situation not because of any reason, but we didn't prepare ourselves well in prayer. And prayer will help you walk through great things. And listen carefully, some of us crack under pressure, but a prayerful person doesn't. A prayerful person can take pressure upon their shoulders. Sometimes I look at certain of my friends who are believers and I see what they can, can take on their shoulders. And I think, wow, it's, it's, it's inhuman that they can even take that. 
that they can survive. They've not gone crazy. They've, they've not given up. They've not fallen down. But they keep moving. They keep ticking. They take a beating and they take a licking and keep moving. Because prayer will enable you to stand strong in pressure. You see, Paul prayed to God for something. He said, Lord, take away this thorn that was in my flesh. And God said, no, I've already given you the, your, this is the answer to your prayer. I've given you the ability to handle that thing already. So, so prayer and fruitfulness are connected because prayer will enable you to take a lot, of, a lot of things on your shoulders. Many of us give up, not because we couldn't have pushed through, but we couldn't take the pressure. And God said to Paul, listen, my grace is sufficient for you. Even stop this prayer. I've already given you the ability to handle it. Jesus, when he was praying in the garden, he said, listen, I don't want to go to the cross. Is there another way? But through prayer, he realized there was another way that, he, that gave him the power and the ability to go to the cross and, and take the agony. But Jesus prayed if there's another way. But through the prayer, he had the peace to go to the cross. Hallelujah. So prayer will not always bring deliverance to a situation, but it will enable you to conquer it and to take it and to stand. And if you can stand tough in a situation, you will eventually see the fruit. If you look at Jacob's life, there was a point where everything was going wrong. There was a point where he even uttered all things are against him. But there's a point that when he called out to the Almighty God in Genesis chapter 32, he became fruitful and he was able to stand. Hallelujah. You see, things that will break some people, other people are able to stand in those things and become fruitful. I want to submit to you this very morning, and it's an introspective sermon. When Jesus saw that the fig tree was not operating in the purpose it was designed to operate in, he said, I've, I've got a problem with you. You shall bear fruit no more. That, and that is the end of it. And he said, from the roots, so you cannot ever grow again. And how does hair grow? It grows from what? A root. And the Bible says something that they cut off Samson's hair, but they, they couldn't destroy the root. Are you with me? They cut Samson's hair off. They put him in the, in the temple of their God. But they forgot one thing. They couldn't destroy the root. So if you're not fruitful even today, understand that God is still giving you the root. There's still a root in you for you to grow. The root in you is not being destroyed. Samson's hair grew again, and the Bible says his strength came back and he killed more Philistines when he died than when he was alive. You still have a root. You might say, I'm not fruitful. Play something to son. You might say, I'm not being fruitful. I say to you, you still have a root. You may say, how do I even produce fruits that will be acceptable to God? I say to you, there's two seasons in the fig tree and there'll be multiple seasons for you to be fruitful. Say to yourself, there's still a root. You think, how am I going to change this situation? There's still a root. The root has not been destroyed. You still have the ability to produce fruit because Jesus has not destroyed the root. He's still calling and looking on you to see where he can find fruit in you. There's still a root. You can still grow again. You may say, what's going on in my life? I'm not producing fruits in the way that I want to. There is still a root. There's still a way forward for everybody. There's still an open door that God wants you to walk through. The Bible says he's commanded you to be fruitful. The Bible says you're called to be fruitful. You may say, I'm not being fruitful. I say, are you operating in the capacity that God has called you to operate in? Many of us walked away from things that God called us to do. Many of us didn't complete things that God called us to complete. But it's still a route. Samson had his eyes put out was in a temple, enslaved, but he still had a root and his strength returned. And if you're under the sound of my voice this very morning, don't lose hope, don't lose heart.
because Jesus has not cursed you from the root. He says there's still a root inside of you and you're going to bear fruit. And fruit comes in so many ways. Are you producing something good in your life? Are you producing something good in the lives of other people? Are you growing in prayer? Are you growing in the study of the words? It's already halfway through the month of January. Have, are we building ourselves up in spiritual things? I want us to be fruitful first in the spiritual realm and then you'll see the manifestation of the fruit in the earthly realm. We've got it the wrong way around. We think we want to be fruitful in the earthly realm, but let's first be fruitful in things of the spirit. Let's have a good character. Let's be prayerful believers. Let's, let's, let's analyze our time properly. Let's look at the times we waste in even one week when we could be spending time with God. Do we ever write down and think even in one day how I could have been fruitful in spiritual things? You still have a root. It's not over for you. Let not, not any devil speak that you cannot be fruitful. Not let any devil tell you that life is like the way it is. You may sometimes be downcast, you may be depressed. But even if you're feeling that way, understand this very morning, that you have a root and you will produce fruit and you shall be blessed. May God richly bless you. Choir, please come. Everybody be on our feet. And I want us to spend the time analyzing. You may say, well, I'm not being fruitful. First analyze, are you where God wants you to be? Are you operating in the capacity that God has called you to operate in? Because if you're off from that, it impacts everything. I submit to you this very morning, your assignment is not something that you do. The assignment that God has given you is why you are put upon this earth. And if you're in that assignment, you shall bear fruit. As they sing a worship song, look within your own hearts and analyze your own fruitfulness on this earth and understand you still have a root.